It's a shadowy industry that, at its peak, generated billions of U.S. dollars in revenue. But at what cost? Hundreds of thousands of people are being forcibly engaged by organized criminal gangs into online criminality in Southeast Asia. <laughs> All the related cases of kidnapping, human trafficking, and unfair labor practices not only threaten social stability, but also puts the Philippine economic recovery at risk. Online casinos, also known as POGOs, or Philippines Offshore Gaming Operators, were once championed as an important source of revenue. Let me know what I can do for you. You are paying me to do exactly what I'm telling you now. Maraming salamat po. But now, seven years after issuing the first online gambling license, lawmakers in the Philippines are looking to outlaw the industry entirely. Calls for the immediate closure of Philippine Offshore Gaming Operators, or POGO. How did the Philippines' online casino industry take such a dark turn? And what can these painful lessons in Manila teach us about new online gaming centers in Southeast Asia. The word casino usually conjures up images of glitz and glamour. But there's another side to the gambling industry, one that's extremely profitable, but far removed from the brightly lit casino floors of Macau, Las Vegas, and Monte Carlo. In 2019, online casinos globally brought in an estimated 145 billion US dollars from gamblers in mainland China alone. Online gambling is not something new in the Philippines. But in 2016, then-president Rodrigo Duterte wanted to sweeten the pot with a new investment scheme. Personally, I do not gamble. Uh, I do not even go to gambling houses. Not because uh, I do not like you. I like all of you. Keep the money coming. Uh, no problem. Pogos offered the Philippines an enticing deal. Billions of US dollars in tax revenues earned from an online industry that, in theory, kept the social ills of gambling overseas. Online casino centers required huge footprints to house thousands of employees. Pogos expanded to occupy more than 1 million square meters of office space in 2019. I think um, the estimated amount of revenues that the Pogo industry has generated to the Philippines reach around $500 million annually. But that's a lot of money. It's an industry that needs a small army of workers. The numbers rise and fall, and like many things in this opaque industry, are likely underrepresented by official data. But industry groups estimate that some 23,000 Philippine nationals work in the Pogos sector. The number of foreign nationals far eclipses that figure with an estimated 300,000 Chinese workers alone working in the industry at its height. Other foreign nationals, including those from Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam, were also employed by POGOs. The majority of these gaming sites focused on a huge and largely untapped market, mainland China. I've looked at the investment uh, data associated with the online gambling firms in the Philippines. I would say there is a disproportionate share of PRC citizens, but you can actually see the main investors and I would say the big bosses are by and large ethnic Chinese. At the industry's peak, it grew to include 281 registered operators. But because of the murky nature of the entire sector, there were, in reality, far more. A lot of the online gambling firms in the Philippines, they act as, I would say, a big gaming hub. When I mean by gaming hub, they end up as a big a legal um, cover for many micro gaming firms. And micro gaming firms, they end up leasing spaces from the Pogos and the Pogos end up 
giving these micro gaming firms a legal, regulatory, and I would say fiscal shield from the state of Philippine government or from the public. It created a sort of Russian nesting doll of sub-companies. One where a legitimate surface operation hit a dark industry of smaller and smaller companies. Uh, a lot of the micro gaming firms inside the Pogos are unregulated. We don't know what they're doing. We, and, a lot, and a lot of people have said that people have interviewed that they actually commit a lot of crimes, specifically crypto, cryptocurrency and scam hubs. So inside the Pogos, there have been detailed cases of, I would say, labor abuse. There have been documented cases of sexual abuse as well uh, against like women workers, for instance. And there are cases of violence uh, inside, basically inside, inside a firm. This is Ridwan. He saw the dark side of the Pogos industry firsthand when he was tricked into joining a scam center in Manila. He asked us to blur his face and alter his voice to protect his identity. Saya adalah seorang anak yang lahir dan tumbuh di sebuah desa. Ada cicilan, orang tua juga terkena penipuan dan tidak bisa dibilang kecil karena ratusan juta. Saya merasa bahwa saya tidak berguna pada saat itu. Saya harus melakukan sesuatu karena posisi saya yang menjadi uh, beban ke orang tua, kemudian orang tua mendapatkan masalah. Saya mencari uh, informasi di sosial media dan saya dipertemukan oleh salah satu request, requester. Dia seorang Indonesia, seorang perempuan. Dia memberikan tawaran, kemudian Dia menjelaskan saya akan menjadi seorang digital marketer di salah satu kota di, Ma- di Filipina. Dia menawarkan gaji yang cukup fantastis, sekitar 17 juta sebulan sebagai uh, marketing digital. Dengan kondisi saya yang sedang dalam kesulitan ekonomi, itu menjadi tawaran yang sangat menggi- menggiurkan bagi saya. Dan tidak ada alasan untuk saya tidak mengambilnya. Uh, Kawasan kondominium dengan tujuh uh, tower dan itu uh, ketika kita sampai di pintu gerbang dengan banyak security di depan pintu gerbang kemudian penjagaan yang luar biasa itu udah mem- menjadi puncak bahwa ini 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 tidak benar nah, di hari pertama kami da- datang kita disodorkan satu orang satu PC kita bisa dikasih satu perangkat PC kemudian dikasih satu iPhone kita disuruh membuat akun sosial media dari berbagai sosial media kita harus mencari satu sosok personal entah itu cewek atau itu cowok jadi kita dibikin diarahkan untuk membuat fake account di situ kita diarahkan untuk mengajak mereka berinvestasi yang pada akhirnya ada itu investasi bodong Di visi saya itu 20 orang Indonesia memang dispesialkan untuk menargetkan pasarnya adalah market Indonesia. Jadi target korban kita adalah orang-orang Indonesia yang mempunyai ekonomi yang cukup payahnya. Akhirnya di hari kedua itu saya memutuskan cari cara untuk keluar dari tempat ini. Kita harus sekitar 20 jutaan. Jadi dia dia bilang tidak sampai sekitar di antaranya 20 jutaan. Saya berpikir bahwa orang tua saya punya uang segitu, sehingga saya mencoba menghubungi, berkomunikasi dengan orang rumah bahwa saya disekap, saya diculik, mereka minta tebusan, tapi saya tidak menjelaskan secara detail. Dari proses negosiasi sampai akhirnya saya dibebaskan itu saya sekitar ya dari awal itu enam hari di dalam sampai proses negosiasi sampai akhirnya pulang saya enam hari dan di tanggal 13 Maret. Akhirnya saya keluar. Nah di saat itu saya merasa bahwa saya sudah bebas. Saya ingin bunuh diri, tapi keinget utang saya belum lunas dan nggak ada yang melunasi utang saya. Berkali-kali saya berpikir bunuh diri. Setelah kasus ini justru saya tidak berpikir bunuh diri lagi. Dia ditekan, dieksploitasi sedemikian rupa. Saya merasa bersyukur karena saya dikasih kesempatan Tuhan untuk mengalami itu dan saya diselamatkan kembali. Saya dikembalikan ke keluarga saya yang menerima saya apa adanya. Uh, is the Pogo sector simply prone to these activities? I think the biggest issue we don't have data. There's not a lot of research around these industries. What we can say is that wherever they go, we find these activities.
it's not just what happens inside these buildings that's raised concerns. Criminal groups have also begun to target those involved in the industry, giving rise to a spate of kidnappings, shootouts, and robberies. Philippine lawmakers began calling for a wider ban on the industry in 2019 as stories about the Pogo's crime wave began to capture attention in the local press. Authorities were able to conduct a series of rescue operations of kidnapped foreign nationals with one incident leading to human trafficking. Beijing, angered by the social impacts of the worst criminal excesses of the Pogo's industry, also warned Chinese nationals to stop going to Manila for work after several instances of torture and human trafficking made headlines. But it would be the pandemic itself that dealt the biggest blow to the industry. The Pogo's industry peaked in 2019 before shrinking significantly by 2021. Today, there are 32 registered POGOs in the Philippines, a 47.5% drop from the industry's height. The new administration of Philippine President Ferdinand Bomba Marcos is far more critical of the industry. The steadfast commitment to com combating illicit activities. In 2022, the Philippine government said it would stop the operations of 175 pogos. Now, lawmakers are going farther, calling for a total ban on the online gaming industry. Pogos are not worth the cost, Madam Chair. So with this hearing, we are hopeful that our call to ban pogo operations in the country will finally be heard and realized Setelah kasus ini dan pulang dengan segala uh, pengalaman experience yang saya dapat, uh, saya tidak lagi mempertanyakan kenapa ini terjadi sama saya, cuman mungkin ada sisi lain dari kejadian ini karena ini di luar di luar di luar uh, bayangan saya dalam kehidupan saya. Menjadi korban TPPO uh, terjebak dalam situasi perdagangan manusia, melihat di depan mata itu shock terapi yang luar biasa yang Jujur saya belum bisa mendeskripsikan itu, makanya setelah kejadian itu saya merasa blessing, lebih bersyukur.